Okay. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, but you know that, don't you? Because that's why you're tuning in. I'm joined today by Mickey Theo from uh, Essex. How are you doing, Mickey? All good, thank you. All good? What all good. Doing? What am I up to? Right now, I'm talking yeah. to you on the phone. <laughs> Have you uh, the usual, the the usual this morning. On? Sorry? Oh, did you say you've been training this morning, yeah? Yeah, just the usual, you know, workout, a bit of breakfast, you know. Yeah, it's all good. Have you heard all from John? Who? John Fury. Have you heard anything from him? John Fury. That's a name. <laughs> um, no, I haven't. I thought you may, we may have a joint, a joint meeting today on, on Skype or Zoom or whatever. No, John, pick up the phone, John. Give me a ring. You've got my number. Uh, I've sent you a text message. I've not heard out from you. We'll get you on Zoom, you and Mickey, and we'll do a face-off and I'll be at middle. What do you think, John? It's not like you to uh, avoid a challenge. So, no, well, anything from him, I, I see one of his videos after I'll start with you. Then he started challenging all the big boys. Yeah. So, I'm here. Let's start with me. Come on board. Come on the channel. Let's talk about it. Yeah? Because yeah? this is going to happen. I'm going to make it happen, John. So let's move forward with this. Remember you said, get on the phone, ring me up and I'm there. Yeah, you, if you, but you want to start with me. I mean, I'm still here, John. I want to get the fight on. Yeah, so we'll do it properly. Come on Porky Channel, we'll discuss it. Backwards and forwards of questions. How, how, what do you think about it? What I think about it? How are we going forward with this? You know, let's do it like gentlemen. Yeah, and Porky will be the, uh, the, the gentleman uh, in the background uh, asking the questions. And I, I'm, I'm sure the fans will want to hear what we got to say and when yeah. is it going to happen? So, yeah, good idea. Uh, I'm worried about John. I think he's uh, MIA, missing in action. Uh, because, <laughs> I mean, people need to check bus stations, train stations, ferry terminals, airports. They need to check people bobbing up and down in the back of people's cars on motorway, trying to get out of the country because John's gone missing, hasn't he? Well, you think his arse has gone? I think... I think we, he might have a bladder problem, yeah. I think there's something not right, isn't there? Well, he's all pissed himself. Video. Okay. Well, his rear bladder. Well, something to back. do with his bladder, because after all them videos about tearing people limb from limb, and you now he's the best 50-odd-year-old, and we've not Yeah, but he said, he said in a would. special way, didn't he? You, you're hey. good at taking him off. He, he said he says it in a special way. I mean, you normally mimic him great. Yeah. I'm John Fury. I'm 56. I'm the best. <laughs> Turn up. Turn up. Just promise me. Yeah. Turn up. Yeah. So we're, we're hoping he's going to turn up on our channel one day, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Not too, too far away. So we can get this uh, supreme fight going, you know. Um, you think you're the best. Well, I don't believe it. I repeat it again. You're not the best. There's many people out there better than you, and I'm one of them, like I said before. So get on the channel. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's move forward with the fight. Um, like I say, I, I will come back with a date. I'm still pending, waiting, talking to the right people. Uh, once I've got it right, and it's up where I want it, in a proper location, all lovely lovely, all professional, like normal people, we will... We will announce it, and you will know soon, yeah. very soon. Come see me, John. I've got a chair here for you. Let's do a nice interview. I'll make you a cup of tea, John. We'll have a chat. We'll talk about hard men. <laughs> anyway, moving on, Mick. What do you think about the news that Channel 5 have got the Santa Cruz Tank Davis fight? Sorry, who's got the fight one? Channel 5 have just bought the rights, international rights, to the tank. All right. Davis. He's amazing. I didn't hear about that. And Santa Rolly the last couple of days. And Leo Santa Cruz, they're going to fight on Channel 5. Um, I mean, why, 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 um, why are they going to fight on Channel 5 and not the like premier sports that we've got at the moment? Like, you know, right. um, BT Sports and uh, Sky Sports. I mean, what? Well, maybe they don't want to sanction it. Is that why uh, maybe they've bought him out? That, seeing there's money involved in this, big money involved, and they, they took the option. Personally, I don't think that BT Sport and Sky have got any money. I think they've done the budgets in. 
right? Because we're coming to the end of the season now, aren't we? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We've just started the new season, but they'll have had all the budgets at the beginning of it. So we're yeah. coming up to Christmas, and then I, I, I think they're holding on to the money. I mean, I heard some other day that Sky did, didn't have the money to buy the Calbrook Crawford fight or the Tia Foma Lopez fight and Lomachenko. Yeah, I'm surprised that that didn't take, that didn't take place on them, you know. Uh, very shocking that, that, that they didn't sanction that one. Mm. What, what you've got to understand, mate, these people run, run it as a business. If they can put KSI, Logan Paul on, but they can't put Brooke Crawford on, where's boxing headed? Where's it headed? Mm. Yeah, that, that doesn't you know make I mean? sense, does it? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, mate. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. And great, I mean, Brooke Crawford's a great fight. Kel Brook's at the top of Hill coming down, and Crawford's just got it. Well, he's at the top now, and he'll be ready for coming down. This could be right timing for Kel, but for him not to put that on Sky or BT Sport, I mean, Warren and Earn have split Kel Brook's 41 fights. I mean, he's had like 20 odd with Warren and so many with Eddie Earn. Is it? I forget now, but it's about, it's near or less roughly the same. So they've been a big part of his career. But I don't know. It's, it rankles with me that they can't put a British kid that spilt his guts for Sky <coughs> on, on, on Sky just because he's, he's been talking to Bob Aaron. We have to remember that Kel Brooks not done anything legally wrong speaking to Bob Aaron. He's a free agent. Eddie, Eddie doesn't have deals with fighters. What Eddie has is an handshake. He doesn't like legal problems, Eddie. Mm. So what's happened is Kel's done nothing wrong. If Eddie's not delivering for him, they've got to try and make their own fights. I mean, his stepdad's his manager. He's going to try and do his best for him. But for Eddie Earn to sit his dummy out because he weren't involved in negotiations, it's ego problems. But, but, you know, and Eddie's now sending a message to all these fighters saying, this is what happens when you're not loyal to me. I don't work with you again. Now, all these other kids that Eddie does work with, they've not got deals. They're all frightened to death now to work with anybody else. He's sending a message. For example, look at Joe Gallagher, right? Joe Gallagher and Frank Warren don't get on. And Joe Gallagher would be on, in, in bits if he had to go work with Frank Warren. He'd be in bits. So Eddie knows this, so he's lowballing him with offers, isn't he? And, and he's the only game in town after Frank Warren, isn't he, Eddie Earn? Well, listen, he's controlling it at the moment out there, yeah, so you know, so he's in control because he's got the he's, he's got who he wants when he wants at his finger, yeah. you know, at his beck and call basically, you know. And like you say, they're all up his ass, the ones that fucking don't say nothing, yeah. um, uh, and the true people. Um, that want to get on and make a living and move forward and, and go for these championship belts. They, they, they've just got a button in their mouth till he, he says, jump. And they say, how high would you like me to jump? You know, the old saying. Um, and he's, 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 listen, Eddie's got him in his, the palm of his hand, I believe. And um, he can call it when he wants to. Call it or call it off or tell him where to go, which I believe is happening to Kel Brook at the moment. Yeah. What do you uh, which think? Is, Sorry, go on. It was his golden boy at one stage, wasn't it? Yeah. It was but you know, he's tucked tucked around uh, Joshua, and uh, he's got he's got he's got listen, he's got most people now, so he's he's, he's got what he wants. He can use it to his accord uh, when he feels like it. So, and the people that were there for him that put him to where he is today, you know, he's got to think about that. You know, when you're climbing a ladder, think about who got you there, what great boxers put you there. Yeah. yeah. Don't just wave them off because you've got a lot more now and you're, you're becoming a man out there. Because, you know what, you could drop like a stone the next day. You know. Well, we know let's, say he turn, let's say, one, let's say, for instance, he loses all his boxers. Yeah? At the end of their contracts. They, they go somewhere else. They go to America. They go Bob, Bob Arum. Yeah. How's he gonna, how is he going to act then? How is he going to move towards fighters? And, you know, uh, what is he going to say to the ones that are gone? You know, uh, uh, what's happening, boys? Um, uh, you know, it's like when Joshua won, won, lost the fight, you know? You see him on stage when Joshua g g gained his title back. Yeah? yeah. Kiss this. It's funny. Yeah? They ripped you off. You, They said you weren't the best and this and that and, you know, and all that bollocks he come out with, yeah? But, um, listen, that was his golden boy yeah, the day and uh, he still has him and I don't think he's going to last long, Joshua. Like I say, I've got nothing against boxers out there or professionals. I just speak it as I see it or I hear it. Um, I don't think Joshua is going to be 
holding them belts for, for a very too long in the, in the new future. Uh, Tyson will walk all over him. And a lot of the fights prior to him getting the belts back were, you know, they stopped, like the Takam fight. Why did they stop that? In the, I think it was a six round. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a guy. Why did this ref jump in to stop him? He was creating problems for, for Joshua back in the day, you know? So... I it was six round. I think it might have been a bit late to me, but... The, was it? I can't remember, but I remember... Late on in the start. fight. But it, there weren't it, nothing wrong with him. Joshua looked like he was gassing, didn't he? He was gassing. You know? Um, a lot of his fights he was gassing, you know, and he just, just scraped the, the bottom of the barrel to get out of it. Um, and the ref, you know, the fights are over here in the UK, so the ref can just jump in when he wants to. Oh, looks a bit dodgy. Josh Josh was going to lose his fight, stop it, you know. And yeah. a lot of people can see that, you know. <laughs> well, I see definitely. Mm -hmm. so, right, uh, what did you think, Mick, about Dominic Ingle's song that he, he made about he, he he's wrote a song and he's performed it and it's out there. It's called "Looking for Pascal Eddie." What did you, did you hear it? No, I didn't, funny enough, just hearing about it now from you. Yeah, we're talking about a man in his 50s here that wrote a song uh, about Eddie Hearn. Do like, you think that's rimming on a massive scale to stay in the mix? It's crazy. <laughs> Honestly. Why would you want to do that? I don't know, mate. I just, uh, nothing surprises me. It's a pantomime. A man it's of that possible. age. A man of his age and calibre writing songs about Eddie Hearn is fucking ludicrous. <laughs> well, it's, in, it's, it's on Spotify. Oh, is it really? I'll, I'll have to listen to that. Interview, mate. You'll, you'll I'll, I'll listen to it, yeah, then I can make, mention it on my next uh, channel with you. But, uh, in fact, let me see if I can find it on him. We'll get it on channel now. It's a little bit of, it. I'm a, bit of a big job. Dominic, well, um, no problem. come see me. Our friend Boomlate has made one as well, hasn't he? Brass oh, and gear. Done a song. Yeah, brasses and gear. Downloaded for 79p. He was like over the moon the other day when I spoke to him. I couldn't believe it. So um, yeah, he's done one. And uh, brasses and gear. Jesus. What boominator's done uh, uh, uh. Right, here we are. It's here, mate. Sorry about that, boominator. Everybody go and buy boominator's song, brasses and gear. <laughs> are you ready for this, mate? Go on, him. Is he singing? Hey? Is he singing that? Yeah, Dominic's singing that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my I God. He was is drunk, he... wasn't it? Is he, is he serious? Oh, he, were in, he were in a group. Uh, was he really? I didn't know that. Well, yeah, when I, many years ago, I used to go up there. Like, it's not far from here. And he were, in a, he were in a group. He used to work at Sainsbury's, Dominic. He were security, you know, where sandwiches and all buns and that. And <laughs> he only lasted about four or five days. He said it wasn't for him. But it were in a band, and it was it were like a, a sort of like a, a take that thing. You know when take that first come out, they were a bit, it was a bit take that, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember it was it. a bit similar to that. Uh, where they used to strip off and that. So he's always been quite musical, have not you, Dominic? Dominic, come see me. But, uh, <laughs> I just think when, when I heard it, right, I was in, I was in a cafe in Doncaster, and everybody in the cafe were like. Oh my God! You know, like you get yeah. up in the morning and you write a song about Eddie Hearn, who's your fighter's promoter and that. It's, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he thought Eddie were going to share it on social media and get him a few quid out of the job. That's probably why he did it. Because the, the, the money-minded, aren't they? They're not up there. But I just think it's it's not manly, is it? I don't think it's manly. I suppose it's the same as Eddie Hearn writing his book, isn't it? Well, he's a trainer, isn't he? Could you imagine Mark Tibbs doing something like that? Or Jimmy Tibbs? No, nah, it's, it's ludicrous. Yeah, that's why, you know, I die. Peter Fury, are you going to write a song about Mick Hennessy? Can you imagine Peter Fury getting his guitar out and doing a song like that? He's one out in that same age, Peter and Dominic. Same age. Yeah. Could you imagine that happening? 
Yeah, but he's done it for a reason, isn't he, um, uh, Ingle? Oh, no. Oh, no, mate. Mm. Oh, no. All right, then, mate. Moving on. Uh, what do you think about all these apologies that they're coming out doing now? We're going on the board. The board. Uh, Eddie Hearn, Coogan. We'll get to Coogan in a minute. You're not going to get off today, Coogan. What would, no, I haven't no. seen anything of Coogan apologising for what? Well, he did an interview with Eddie Hearn. He said, well, I just want to, want to say sorry for these people who said it was a phone. It weren't a phone. It was a scorecard. Eddie Hearn's apologised to O'Connor on, on IFL. Adam Smith says he's a great guy and... and it, there's been an investigation uh, and he's been cleared and they're happy with how he judged uh, the fight. They're, they're, crawl, uh, they're crawl, just, crawling again, aren't they? They're crawling up someone's arse again. Yeah, and Tesco uh, Jones apologised to Sky Sports for in, in, in a couple of videos after... You see, what, what are you getting boxing? And I'm guilty of this as well. You get a knee-jerk reaction, don't you, because we're passionate. And then afterwards, you get grovelling apologies, like Johnny Nelson grovelling about saying Povetkin for a lucky punch against Dylan White. It's rimming on a massive scale. They are monitor lizards, in my opinion. Yeah. In my opinion. And I just think, if you say something, you've got to stand by it. You can't backtrack on a massive scale, can you? I think David Hayes said, no, that's not a lucky punch. He does, and Derek Chisora, uh, I think, took one on the, on the chin as well in sparring. Uh, calling it David A. Well, um, David A is trying to build up a fight for Derek after this one. Look, they're going to want another pay per view for Derek. If Derek loses, he's got 10 losses. They're going to, they're still going to want to keep churning him out. And then until there's nothing left in him, then they'll throw him to Dana White and have a, have a MMA fight. And then they'll just send him on his way. Then David O will want it next one. And that's the nature of the beast, really, isn't it? Is there a rematch clause in this fight coming up? Uh, I don't Probably know, not. but I've, I would have thought if it's a close fight, they'll screen Blue Murder for a rematch to keep Usyk active because it looks like Joshua and Fury might be tied up to two fights next year. So these other guys, you might you might see around Robin Usyk, Chisora, uh, Pavek Kim White, throw Parker in mix as well. You might see around Robin between all that, all them people. Do you know what I mean? I was watching the um, fight with um, Tony Bellew and Usyk the other day. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I really was studying it and I'm looking at him and his leg movement's terrible, I believe. You are. Um, his leg movement. Everyone's going on about how great he is on his leg movement, you know? Fucking terrible, I think, he's on his leg movement. Um, for what people are making him out to be. Um you know, and I, I believe Derek will take him out this this weekend. Um, I may be wrong, but that's my beliefs. And I'm going to put a few quid on it as well, cause, you know, just for a bit of fun. Um, but I don't, I, I don't rate what people are saying, especially Eddie, about great footwork, this and great footwork. You look at him fighting, what footwork? He's, he's, he's running in sideways and then he's switching in the other way and his feet really are all over the way. Um, you know, this is what I can see. Um, but we'll see, you know, on the night. We'll see what Derek does to him. Well, I might be wrong. Who do you think wins, mate? Derek Chisora. I don't a lot of people he say he's the underdog, but is he the underdog? I think he's a heavyweight. He can fight. He can move. He can bob from left to right. And uh, I think he's going to do, do a number on him and shut everyone up out of there, you know? Yeah. I'll have a 50 quid bet where you make the all set wins. You're on. Are we on? Yeah. There you go. I'll collect as well. <laughs> no problem. Good man. Uh, moving on then. The other fights on the card. Dave Allen against Lovejoy. Is it on? Is it off? Don King's got involved saying he's got a contract with Lovejoy and he's trying to stop the fight. Uh, if it I don't happen, know. Is it? I, I, I truly don't know if he's going to... Is it on? I mean, it's not confirmed, is it? He's still on box trick as of 10 minutes ago. What was it saying? No, it, it, Lovejoy's not been took off box trick. Oh, so it's still on then? Eh? It's still on, is that right? Well, weigh-ins tomorrow, so they're going to struggle to get somebody else in, aren't they? Well, yeah. Because they've got all these tests to do, aren't they? So maybe David might get another, another day, or maybe... Eddie might try and work a deal out with Don King for David to fight one of Don King's fighters if he lets him fight this guy now. 
I don't know how who's, tra it. who's training day, uh, David at the moment? Jamie Moore. Training him for fight? Yeah, Dave, Dave Allen. Yeah, yeah, Jamie Moore. Jamie Moore? Jamie Moore. Well, I'll tell you what, how after Jamie Moore, he's got him in some good, good condition. What, I think he looks that really that well. I see, a, I see a picture of him the other day. He, he, he looks amazing. That was February, mate. Was it February? That was February, that photograph, yeah. So he's put a lot of weight on since then? Well, we don't know, do we? But they're not going to put a... That was February, that photo. I remember it. I'm oh, was it? That. Okay. Well, th this is what you're up against. Fake news and fake beef and... Fake yeah. It's all sense drive you insane, mate. So I hope you're, gonna get, I hope you're getting you mentally ready for when... For when you're you're gonna fight John because when venues so to the north. Well, you see me, you see me uh, on a last video. I even took my top off. You know, I'm I'm not looking bad. Um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I'm I'm still like you know, I can say I'm haven't peaked yet. i could be eight weeks away. I, I'm just you know, I'm I'm almost there basically. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. Uh, we're not we're not we're, we're not in a bodybuilding competition at the end of the day, you know. Like everyone says out there, you know, you don't grow muscles on your on your chin, as everyone says out there. Yeah, yeah. all these bollocks. All right then. Well, I think if Dave fights Lovejoy, he knocks him out in three rounds. And if it's a if they just get him in a, a journeyman to blow away, he'll blow him away. But I'm going to have Dave Allen, Usyk to win, Dave Allen and Savannah Marshall to beat Anna Rankin. Oh. Yeah, um, I don't know much about uh, the ladies, but yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right, then. Moving but, on, um, man. Uh, I want to ask you, Mick, about the, these these IFL videos, right? The IFL are taking the comment sections off their videos, right? If any of the IFL fans, like, for instance, you did an interview with Coogan, didn't you? Right. We've done quite a few with Coogan. You know, it was on my case for quite a while. Uh, not very quiet. I like Coogan. Coogan's all right. They've been took off though, Mick, haven't they, the channel? There was one particular video. I, was, I questioned them. Why was it taken? And, and it was all respect on it. Nothing wrongful on it. Uh, all done properly, correctly, respectfully. And I said to him, why has that, why has that come down? He goes, oh, um, he mentioned that YouTube do take them down every now and then. You know, he's had them taken down before. I don't know about these things. I'm not in the game. So, um, and he swore on his mother's life. Uh, so I believed him because I don't know any better. I, I'm i not one to say I don't know the game. So it is what it is to me, you know, whether it's taken down or he's, he got someone took him. I, I, it could have been a certain person that told him to take it down or to get no more work of him. So who knows? Whatever it is, it is. Uh, it's not going to affect me. Um, in any way, it's only going to affect them for what they've done at the end of the day. And the, uh, listening to obviously the outsiders telling them to take it down, they've got no balls themselves to keep it up. Anyway, listen, it is what it is. Coogan's not a bad guy. Um, we got to get right on the phone for the period we did. And I, I did, did after come back to him and say, Come on, let's do a little um, a shout out. He goes, I can't, I'm not allowed to because it's uh, not correct, it's not um, professional. And it's unlicensed. I can't get involved anymore. So why did you get involved in the beginning? You know, <laughs> Coogan's not got a board license. He can do anything he wants on YouTube. Well, yeah, he said to me he couldn't after that. So obviously, maybe he's been told to, and he felt bad telling me that. I suppose, and you know, I'm not holding a grudge against Coogan. You know, I, I, I find him all right. Um, nice. He seems a nice guy to me anyway. Uh, so you know. If he was, it was, you know, someone's controlling him. They're controlling him, uh, it could be. But, well, uh, I've had they're a not little controlling little... me, they're controlling him. So, yeah, <laughs> it's his, his last shout, isn't it? Yeah, I've had a little look today, and uh, well, one of my followers sent me some. I had a little look on my phone, and it's, 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 there's been the Chad and Courtney video, a Joe Gallagher one, and this Natasha Jonas one yesterday, where people are maybe talking out of turn about Eddie Hearn. Um, sorry, Shannon Courtney didn't speak out of turn about Eddie Hearn. I think she got a bit of stick for being a diva. Comments sections, sections turned off. It's favours for favours. Coogan, you know I'm telling the truth. Stop being a casual and let people express themselves. You express yourself and you let everybody express themselves on the channel. 
When anybody's got anything to say against your little crew, your little cult, all of a sudden you're cutting comment section off or taking videos off. I'd never do that. I've still got free lives on YouTube, me. The simple thing is you can say what you want as long as you don't threaten to kill anybody. And what you do, you just press the certificate 18 or not for kids part on the video. And then you yeah. don't have any problems. You don't have any problems whatsoever then. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why he took your video down, but I'm telling you, he's a liar. Right? And if he's not a liar, tell him to send you a screenshot from YouTube saying we've took your video down. Because they don't do that. I will show you. I'll send you some YouTube stuff in a minute about the rules. The Coogan, stop telling massive ones. I've been learning off Eddie. But I do like him. He's an hard worker. And he, he's, he's sort of in the middle of them all. They all kind of give him a hard time, don't they? Yeah, I suppose he's in a position not to uh, to listen to people and, and do what they say, I suppose, because that's where he is. Um, listen and, listen uh, to me on this one, mate. Tyson Fury rings him up. Coogan, put this on your channel. Traveller lives matter. What's that? That's not true boxing. Yeah, okay, Tyson, nodding dog. Because yeah. he knows he's got to do, because he needs access to Tyson. This is yeah. where people on YouTube, they make a mistake where they get too friendly with people. Instead mm. of being, uh, instead of, uh, what's the word, what am I looking for? Instead of, you gotta, they've got to be professional. Me, when I was working with Dennis, he used to say, oh, don't do this, or don't do that, or do this or that, and I was like, I'm going to do what I want to do. I always have gone my own way ever since I was a small boy, right? Yeah. But there is a conflict of interest with a lot of it. And it's boxing, isn't it? Like I said, it's the wild, wild west. Mm. But he's the top dog in the country for YouTube. And people want to use him, don't they? But he wants to use them as well, doesn't it? He? he has a certain batch of people, 25 people, who he interviews all the time. I don't see him at amateur shows. I don't see him interviewing kids turning pro. I don't see him at Mark Tibbs' gym interviewing any of them young lads there that have turned over. I don't see that. I see the same old people being interviewed. I have a problem with that. Yeah, you've got a point there. That's just... Well, I'm not seeing he's an hard worker, but... <coughs> you know, don't you? You know, so... Well, Coogan, I'm here. Get on the blower. Give me a ring. you got my number. And let's do a video about me and John. Yeah, let's do the video. I mean, he's, he's well in with Tyson Fury, isn't he? Although, yeah. Not, so he said. I'd like to have a chit chat with you about John Fury, about getting a fight on. Yeah. So this fight's it's, got it's, to happen, Mick, can not it? It's got. It's going to happen, and uh, I'll make it happen. And uh, simple. John was jumping and, and raving himself not too long ago. Well, you know, where are you, John? Like um, Porky says. Maybe you've gone on the mission list, you know. Come I'm out. Yeah. All right, then, mate. Wait. Uh, what do you think about Mike Tyson against Roy Jones, November the 28th, on BT Sport pay-per-view? What do you think about that? In what respect? Well, they, they couldn't put Brooke Crawford on or Lopez uh, Lomachenko. About getting on the pay-per-view. Well, he's, he, they're big names, aren't they? They're big names from the past. Um, and I think... The what, sorry? You've had the day, Mick, haven't they? Yeah, but I think people still want to see Tyson. He's a name. He's a, he, you know, he's he's the man. Um, and uh, it's a fight probably, because uh, he's Mike Tyson, you know, he could turn up when he's probably 60 or 70 and still get a crowd. He's one of them celebrities that will never fade away in, in the boxing yeah. world, I believe. And he's my idol, you know. I love him, um, and I do believe he's gonna he's gonna hurt um, Jones Jr. Yeah. But uh, listen, a lot of people think Jones is is a lot quicker, faster. Uh, but listen, we see, you know, um, it, it, it's good. It's good to see they're in, they're in the fifties. Um, it's the same as me and uh, Big Bad John, um, which, uh, like I say, I believe uh, that uh, I was the first one to announce someone to fight in the 50s, so, you know, so, and the rest come out and started uh, coming out of retirement and all sorts, but it's all good. It'd be good to see them, and uh, I suppose I've heard that a lot of people want to see me and John fight. Um, even the boomer, Nate, was saying, like, uh, Vinnie Jones was, was like, uh, 
taking interest and watching every every episode we've done. And the first thing he said to Boominate was, you know, what's going on with the fight with Mick, Mick Theo and uh, John Fury? And he says, well, I think it's going to happen, you know, but and they're, they're all eager. So if, if Finney's on, on the case, I'm sure there's a lot of pro, uh, uh, celebrities out there that are into their boxing, as you see main events all over the world. You've all seen, you know, they're, they're at the events because they enjoy the boxing. So I'm sure they want to see it. They've heard about it as well, you know. Mr. Big Bad John Fury, you know. You were in a film, Mick, weren't you? Uh, directed by Guy Ritchie called Snap. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Tell me about the character that you played in the film. Um, I was Mad Fist Willie. Um, one of the Mad fighters. Mad Fist Willie. Mad Fist Willie. Mad Fist Willie, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> there was a couple of scenes in there and there was a guy called uh, John the Gun. And then Turkish was talking to the other fella. I forgot his name. He's quite a character as well. Um, they was getting the fights together. And, uh, I think uh, Brad Pitt knocked someone out and they said, well, we're going to get to fight him now. And they, then they, the, the cameras turned to John the Gun. What about John the Gun? And you see him in a, in a boxing ring punching a bag. And then they said, well, what about Mad Fish Willie? And I was like, I've got this bar and I'm growling, you know, pulling it down. And then Turkey says, well, we can't use Mad John the Gun. He, he shot himself. So it shows Mad John the Gun in a shower going bang. And then he goes, what about Mad Fish Willie? He's fucking nuts gone. He sent him to a fucking lunatic place. So I was in a paddy cell catching flies and doing all this business, you know, and his funny music playing. So, uh, so basically, yeah, that was it. And you went mad <laughs> in the film, in the scene, you, you went mad, didn't you? Yeah, Matt Fish, uh, John the Gun shot himself and Matt Fish went mad. So it put me in a paddy cell. Yeah, you went mad in a paddy cell, didn't you? Yeah, I was catching flies, like just doing all this business, you know. So it was quite funny. I mean, Scott Welsh was the main character that fought Brad Pitt or Mick they called him in the in, in the film um, and because I was close to Scott at the time we was training together and he said look they're looking for some extras go down there and I got the part and yeah it was alright something to do I've done a few commercials in Holland and here and there in the world um, big commercials and a few other bits and pieces um, that's when I was really big uh, but um, I think I'm out somewhere I've got a tape somewhere I'll have to put it on an old I think it was a you know, uh, uh, the old tapes, the VHFs tape or whatever it's called. Um, I'll have to get it converted to DVD or something. Yeah, but uh, it's all fun. It's all fun and games. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know that actually, uh, but I'm impressed, mate. Actor, <laughs> bodybuilder, car dealer. But you, what you flog Bentley's Range Rovers for hours a lot, don't you, on your pitch? Mm. Uh, what else? What else? What else have we done, mate? Boxer. Well, you're, you're doing a bit of boxing, aren't you? Well, I've been in phone business, been in restaurants, I've been. I've done. Done. I think I've done it all. Gyms. <laughs> gyms. Had a gym up in Witness, yeah, for two years, just outside Liverpool. What do you think to Witness? Witness is is a quiet place, quiet little town. I mean, I actually lived in Manchester, just just that in, in uh, just outside Denton. Um, and hence, that's why I got to know Kerry Kays back in the day. Um, what I think of that is it's a, bit, it's a bit slow for me, me being used to London and come six o'clock, it's a ghost town. So, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't stay up there. Lovely people, to be honest, up north, they're great. Um, yeah. They're great people up north, yeah. But oh, um, yeah, we've still got a, good, a few good friends up there. We contact each other every now and then. Um, yeah. Are you going to be watching boxing uh, tomorrow night, mate? Indeed, yes, because I've got a £50 bet with you. Yeah, it's weighing <laughs> today, isn't it? It's what, sorry? Sorry, it's weighing today, isn't it? The weighing's today, isn't it? Friday. Weighing's <laughs> today, yeah, boxing tomorrow, yeah. I, yeah, listen, I think it's a good event he's got on anyway. It's good because some good fighters fighting. Um, Nineteen ninety nine is that a good price? Yeah, well, look, look, pair of them. Aren't, they're not fighting for a belt, are they? Chizora's nine lost, so all six in his second heavyweight fight. No belt online. Shouldn't be pay per view, but in current climate with no gate, it's one of them. I heard that you heard the other day giving it. You know, people are unhappy because it's ninety nine now. But we're putting a good show on. He said it's from seven o'clock in the in the afternoon in the evening, uh, right the way through. Um, some great fights, you know. Honestly, I think he's right. I think, you know, 
if someone can't afford 19 or 20 pounds, you know, there's a, there's a yeah. problem out there, isn't there? You know, if you went out and you bought a couple of drinks, that's 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 still almost 20 pounds, isn't it? Yeah. And you're going to want about five or six drinks, probably most people want to go out or buy around the drinks. You've thought about 50, 60 quid before you go anywhere. You know, you can buy so, drinks from Asda, can't you? Sitting out and having paid for your yeah, you could, yeah, you could do that as well and watch the boxing. Yeah. <laughs> so, listen, I think all, all, listen, all the boxing fans are going to still watch it. Um, he's got to make his money, the boxers are going to make money, everyone's got to make their money yeah. at the end of the day, you know. There's a lot of people criticizing it, but you know, that's the game. You either watch it, you don't watch it. It's simple, isn't yeah. it? You know, a lot of people were saying about, we're not, we, we, like John was saying about pay per view, John, John Fury, and you know, you're not this and you're not that and you're not worthy of that. And, you know, it's, a, it's not me, it's, it's who wants to watch you around the world at the end of the day, you know. I mean, you know, you know we, you, were you and John fighting, right? Obviously, you want the fight and John's not getting back to you. John's saying, come up to this gym and we'll get at it. And if you don't, the fight's off. And, and you've had well, he didn't say the you. fight's off if, if I don't come. He didn't say anything like that. He just said, I'm oh, ready, well. turn up, turn up. And yeah. that was it. Um, what was you going to say? Sorry. Why didn't you go to his gym then? The Why didn't I go to his gym? Yeah. Well, it's like going to his back garden, isn't it? Backyard, same thing. Yeah. I don't know what's up there. I don't know what's plotted up behind there. I don't know what I'm going to walk into. Plot yeah. a door. <laughs> sorry. Plot a door. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's it, well, I don't have a, a problem. It's a it's a challenge at the end of the day. You yeah. know, it's like. Look at it as two pro boxers. I'll turn up back in. I'm gonna. You're going for a row, ain't you? You're not going yeah. for an event, a challenge, yeah. You know. Do you know and, what I suggest? Um, I suggest it's like Billy Joe Saunders said. You know, if I've got a problem with John, you know, how us travellers do it. I don't have a problem with John. If I had a problem with John, I would be talking on the internet. I'd yeah. go and deal with it in my way. Yeah. Yeah. But well, don't have a problem. You know, we're talking. If you're not we're, we're talking as uh, we're trying to get the challenge out in on the air mm. as respect to the other person. Yeah, it's a challenge, that's all it is. Take the um, challenge, and that'd be a shit, shit, simple. Yeah, because everyone's looking at you as a shitter, as like a shit house, as they, as they call it in your language. Um, especially the, the your fellow, your fellow travelers as well. Yeah, well, this is no respect for you, John. Sorry. Yeah. Mate, there's no gate, is there? If you're fighting, there's no gate. There might not be any gate now all June, right? This is what they're saying. So if there's no gate, it's got to be paid for view on it to get for you to get paid and to give something to NHS. Listen, right. at the end of the day, there's a lot of public out there saying, you know, you know, pay per view and this is what you're talking about and what this and what that, you know. Listen, would they want to go? Would, would a professional fight someone like like Usyk and Chisora? Would they just go and fight each other for nothing? No, they want pain. You know, with David, why is David Hay involved with Derek Chisora? Money. Mm. Yeah, like you say, he's getting paid this 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 week coming. You know, you know, it's all about money. The whole world is about money. Yeah, if we want, like we say, I said before. You know, we want to tear up. We all can go outside and cause problems and have a fight. Yeah, yeah. but where's that going to get you? Nowhere. Yeah. Oh, Professional yeah. guys, they fight for for purses, big purses. At the end of the day, top of the league. Um, if you said, right, you two fight, uh, let's say back again, Wilder and Tyson, you've got a rematch, a rematch the third time, let's get in there and fight, but you get zero passes. Will they fight? No, they won't fight. Tyson would tell Wilder where to go, wouldn't he? Yeah. So it's all about the dollar at the end of the day. So this, listen, this, this shout out six months ago has gone viral, it's gone everywhere. It's Create so much interest, and it's become a business now. Yeah, that's the fact. Yeah, and why should two guys get in a ring, smash themselves up? Yeah, for nothing. Well, Tyson, you, uh, to, uh, Mike Tyson, he's doing a charity event. He's getting fifty grand for it. Yeah. Do you think? Does. Do you think? Do you honestly think Mike Tyson will get in a ring without getting paid? No, nah, not happening. None of them. Or maybe they're coming out of retirement because they're short of a few quid and they want to make a few quid. Yeah. It's normal. It's natural. It is what it is. Simple. You guys that don't want to pay for it, don't watch it. Yeah. yeah. You can do all your slagging off behind the behind the doors, all the 
like the guy behind the other day with the mask on, yeah? All the bullshit behind the mask, covering your face, yeah? You can do what you got to do. Simple. Well, you're being covering your face. Me and you. The ones, yeah, threatening. Well, I don't. Did he threaten you? I can't remember. Me, yeah, you, he, he, said, he said a few words. But listen, why don't you just get on and open, take your mask off, and show your face who you are? You know, if you have got any bollocks, you know. What I mean, or listen, stay behind your mask, stay hidden because you'll you'll always be hidden. You know, uh, you're 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 one of these people who've got nothing else better to say, say behind closed doors or mask. You know, it's but like that's you doing this, making it. <laughs> Let me just see what you've done. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that video, what he's just done, mate, is. <laughs> hell, it's. <laughs> Mick, it's helmet <laughs> behaviour, isn't it? Ah, uh, fucking hell. Proper help with that one, isn't it? Hey? That's, did you say that for John? Did, is that got John Fury's name on it? Because he won it once, didn't he? John's not. Do you know what? John's not had twenty votes for this month for helmets at month. I've just been told. I said, really? "You're joking me." He says, "No, he's hardly had any votes this month," which has shocked me because he's usually right up the top for helmets, John. But this month, he uh, he hasn't had any votes hardly. Yeah, it's coming at the end of the month as well, isn't it? So may, maybe so next next month, month he'll, he'll maybe next month he'll make number one. He might make a comeback next month. He's had a bit of a quiet time, John. He might be resting after all them five mile runs. Yeah, I think it was ten miles, wasn't it? Ten, <laughs> ten miles. That's just a warm up to to John, that. Mm, I don't run at all. Hey. I don't run at all. Don't you? Nah. Well, this is how I look at it, right? You know, boxing, it's only a small ring, isn't it? Why do people need to do run, run, run like that? To get the fitness, I understand that, but you can build your cardio up doing other things that set running, can't you? I've never liked running, to be honest, yeah. I'll get on a mountain bike and I'll do as much I can do it all day long, up hills, up mountains. I love it. But I'm not really, I've never been a runner. And I think it's boring, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no worries then Mick uh, alright then well we'll wrap it up but it's been a pleasure having you on John get in touch with Mick or get in touch with me let's have it on Zoom and I'll answer the I'll ask the questions John I'll ask the questions for you and me let's get this fight on let's get it on <laughs> alright so thanks for coming on Mick and uh, have a great weekend and yeah and you uh, let's hope, let's hope. Yeah, so, so someone wins the fight, and you know. Oh, well, don't you believe in country making slipping out on a ferry or a, or a plane with my fifty? Well, I might <laughs> just fly around the world see if I can find John somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, mate. Well, listen, you have a great weekend. Cheers, and mate. you too, mate. Thank you, mate. God bless. Well, that was Mickey Theo. Uh, enjoyed that. Uh, it's nice to have a bit of banter and. You know, a bit of, bit of boxing chat, isn't it? It's just to uh, fill the Friday. I need to go... Uh, I need to go to cash machine, I think. So, right. Uh, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys. AJ, I know you're watching. Sat at home in your bar playing pool. All right. Peace out.